Welcome to Marriage Mondays with the Kings. I'm Kenya. And I'm Shan. And And we we are are the Kings. Kings. Happy Monday. Thank you all for joining us this Monday for Marriage Mondays with the Kings. We greatly appreciate it. We're going to go ahead and get into today's show. Let you know that Marriage Mondays with the Kings is brought to you by our sponsor, Christian Humor Forward slash Inspiration. This is a group that's designed to uplift, inspire, and bring humor to everyday life in a Christian way. If you are in the social media, please go and check them out simply by searching them on Facebook at Christian Humor Forward slash Inspiration. And so we're going to go ahead and open up with a word of prayer. We ask if you are able to safely bow your heads with us or if you're listening with your your family or your loved ones, if you can just grab each other's hands and go before the Lord in prayer. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we say thank you, dear God, for just another day, dear God. We thank you for waking us up this morning, Heavenly Father. We thanking you for protecting us through the night. We thanking you for guiding us through today, Heavenly Father. We just give you all glory and honor and praise for the breath that is in our body, dear God. Dear God, right now we just want to take time to lift our graduates up to you, dear God, on whatever level that they are in, dear God. We want to thank you for those that even though this may be hard in this time, dear God, that they keep a positive mindset. We want to thank you for those parents, Heavenly Father, that is just making this a great experience the best that they can for the graduates, Heavenly Father. We thank you for those who pursued and continue to go forth, dear God, to meet their goal. We ask that you would just order their steps, Heavenly Father, as they go forth, dear God, and continue to keep your hands on them, dear God. Dear God, we come to you right now, dear God, just asking, dear God, a special prayer, dear God, that you would just keep us strong during this time, dear God. We thank you for those who are staying strong during this time, those who are choosing to have a positive mindset, dear God. Those who are not allowing the enemy to to have any type of joy, dear God, but we know that this is not the case for everyone, Heavenly Father. So we ask a special prayer, dear God, for those who are going through, who may be battling depression, battling suicide, or any type of negative thoughts, dear God. Dear God, we ask that you would just drop in our spirit, dear God, that we will be a light for you, for someone else, dear God, that may be going through at this time, Heavenly Father. Dear God, we know that times may be hard, but we know, dear God, that you are the Alpha and the Omega, dear God. You are the one that is going to see us through, dear God. So we continue to lift up marriages to you, dear God. We ask that you would just continue to just guide, dear God, every husband and wife, every uh, mother and father, dear God, every family, dear God, that you would continue to be the head. We ask a special prayer for our churches during this time. We ask a special prayer for our government officials, dear God, that we would all just fall on our knees, dear God, and we would just turn to you and ask ask what it is that you desire for us to do so we would walk in the steps that you have ordered for us, Heavenly Father. We thank you so much for this show on today, dear God. We ask that you would just be in the midst with whatever that's being said, Heavenly Father, that it would be positive for those who hear it, dear God, that it would cause people to want to do better, Heavenly Father. We lift up KRGN radio station to you, dear God. We ask that you would continue to cover it and bless it like none other, dear God. We ask a special prayer for all the radio host personalities, dear God volunteers, dear God, of KRGN that help keep this station going, dear God. So this station will continue to be an inspiration to many as you see fit, dear God. We ask this special prayer for me and my husband's marriage, dear God, that you will continue to just cover it, Heavenly Father, as we go forth and speak the things that you have placed on our heart to be said, dear God. We ask less of us be spoken on today and more of you, dear God. We ask that you will continue to just have your way, dear God, and continue to get joy out of the things that are being done, not just with us, but everyone, Heavenly Father, that we would be iron sharpeneth iron as your word say. We ask and pray all these things in Jesus, name. in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And our KRG and disclaimer views expressed on this show are those of the host, guest, and callers are not necessarily those of KRGN 98.5 FM, its management, or other advertisers. KRGN 98.5 FM holds no responsibility for the validity or accuracy of information on this show. And please keep in mind that although we are counseling professionals, the information shared on our radio show is for ministry educational purposes only. Also note that topics discussed are reflective of supporters who contact us desiring to have a deeper knowledge of these topics. No information is shared shared on our show based upon our counseling experiences. Topics are for the encouragement of marriages, families, and communities as God desires for us to minister. And our motto for Marriage Mondays with the Kings, helping to build stronger marriages which leads to stronger families and stronger communities. 
And so our foundational scripture for our show comes from the book of Matthew chapter 19, verse 6, where it reads, So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. So to jump off into our announcements, you guys know we love to show love to those individuals uh, that support Marriage Mondays with the King. So we want to start off in Missouri City, Texas, and send a big shout out to Carlos Lewis. All so, right. Carlos, thank you so much for being a supporter. Yes. And also in Winter Haven, Florida, we want to send a big shout out to Zena Tubbs. Okay. So, Zena, thank you so much for being a supporter. Thank and you. And then in Lonstuhl, Germany, Lashia Bogan. Lashia, okay. thank you so much for being a supporter. Uh, but we want to thank those three individuals, but not only those three, but to any and everyone who is a supporter of Marriage Mondays with the Kings and KRGN uh, 98.5 FM. Thank you so much, and we ask for your continued support. Amen. Amen. So moving down to anniversaries, uh, we only have one anniversary uh, that we were able to get a hold of uh, to give a shout-out this week, and that is going to go to Ken and Lena Corbin of Pine Bluff, Arkansas, celebrating right. 10 years on the 1st of May. Yes. And and I would just go out there to say uh, we've known Ken and, and Lena for a number of years. Uh, Lena used to be a um, health care or I would say child a care child provider. care provider mm-hmm. for us uh, way back in the day when we were staying, stationed at Fort Campbell. And Ken uh, was a minister at the time at one of the churches that we attended. Mm-hmm. Uh, those two have definitely had a long travel in their uh, relationship in their marriage, but they're continuing to push on. Uh, outstanding man and woman of God. Uh, once again, Ken is a minister, uh, pastor. Uh, Lena is first lady. So we just uh, just want to say uh, thank them for their continued support to God and spreading the word and just continue to ask for your prayers for them and all marriages uh, that they continue to get many more anniversaries to come. And so keep in mind the Caragian is 100% listener-supported radio station. And so it is supported off of the listeners that support Caragian. Now, the address of Caragian is 100 West Central Texas Expressway, number 307, Harker Heights, Texas, 76548. What we are asking during this time is that if you have been a listener or supporter of, of KRGN, if you could just let us know how KRGN has blessed you, especially during this time, um, you know, maybe it was a word that was spoken, maybe it was one of the shows, maybe it was, you know, music that was played. Just let us know how you have been encouraged by KRGN. That would truly be a blessing to us and also share with others. You can also go to www.mykrgn.com and it's a tab on there that says contact us. You could also send a message that way. And so we ask that you would just continue to show um, love to KRGN by helping to get the word out about KRGN so others may be blessed. So moving on, as we show love to those of KRGN, as we do at 98.5 FM, we would like to thank the spiritual overseers, the radio show owners and managers, all the radio personalities, volunteers, and those who sow financially into KRGN, as well as those who keep KRGN in your prayers. Keep in mind that KRGN has a, an app. It is royal blue and white, so you can download it from your app store and you can keep it locked 24 hours a day. Now, we're going to go into a quick recap of last week's show. It was entitled, Are You Marrying the Trauma of Your Past or Rewriting It? And so if you happen to miss out, because that was an amazing show, you can catch up by going to our Apple and Google podcast. We are also on Spotify, um, iTunes, and Buzzsprout. Don't forget our YouTube channels on there as well. And so even if you wanted to share that and you caught it and you want to share it with someone else, you can go to those avenues, especially our YouTube page, and you can share that with them. So that was last week. And so going into today's topic is going to be divorce and quarantine, divorce and quarantine. And one of the things that we wanted to take a look at, you know, we've seen a lot of things come across Facebook. Uh, We've looked across the Internet. uh, We've looked at news channels and what we were seeing and that in some countries, uh, after this pandemic went through that country and the individuals were coming off of quarantine, was that their divorce rate uh, was starting to spike up dramatically. Mm-hmm. And so here in the United States, we started to see individuals post things was, you know, as soon as this 
uh, quarantine is over. I'm, I'm filing for divorce. Mm-hmm. Uh, things are not going well right now. You know, divorce seems like it's the only answer. So we wanted to be able to take some time to address this. And hopefully what we're going to give you on today uh, would be able to help those individuals that may be considering divorce uh, in their relationships. And so our question of the week is this. We have two different ones and we did receive responses. So thank you for those who responded. But it's question number one is why do you think the world goes so hard to promote divorce? And question number two is do you allow what the world promotes to affect your thought process on marriage and divorce? And so again, we have received some responses back. Thank you for that. And we're going to go ahead in the duration of the show and we're going to share that with you all. Yeah. So to get started off, uh, we want individuals to understand that, you know, from our mission that God has given us, you know, we would love to see uh, couples stay married, you know, for forever Mm -hmm. until death do you part. Mm -hmm. Uh, But we know that there are a lot of things that go on in relationships that may hinder that. And, you know, and sometimes it's understandable, you know, no one wants to stay in a relationship if it's not healthy for them, Mm -hmm. if it's from a, a mental or physical, you know, standpoint, uh, sometimes you have to do what's best for you, but Mm -hmm. that is between you, your spouse, and God, you know, if you uh, make that decision to get divorced. So when we talk about this, we don't want to negate the fact that there are a lot of reasons why individuals get divorced. Um, And, you know, for some of us, you say, well, that's no reason, but for another individual, it might be, you Mm -hmm. know, and a lot of those reasons, uh, Right now in this time that we're in, finances is a big thing that is hitting a lot of individuals. They've never had to be without a job before. Mm -hmm. They're worried about where the next uh, paycheck is going to come from to pay the bills, keep a roof over their head, keep food in the house. And so all of that causes stress on individuals, and sometimes we don't handle stress uh, very well. Mm -hmm. Uh, This is the first time for a lot of individuals that they've had to be isolated. Uh, they're, they're not coming outside of their homes. They're, they're not able to go to work. Uh, domestic violence is on the rise. Uh, individuals are experiencing grief at an all-time high. They're losing family members and loved ones and friends, and they're not able to get the closure that they need. So if you start to throw all of this stuff that we're uh, talking about in a pot, it might be a recipe for divorce. Mm-hmm. And so also just thinking about the fact of how your life has changed. It's not what we consider normal or what our normal activities used to be. There has been a change in the way that we live, uh, an adjustment, if you will, and that is hard for a lot of individuals. Change is not always accepted very well by everyone. Mm-hmm. And sometimes this adjustment, this change, uh, it, it forces insecurities that we have to really come to the forefront. Mm-hmm. It may be insecurities about the future that we have. What's going to be happening with my job? Uh, how am I going to make money? What's going on with you know the kids that are in school, or even if you're as an adult are in school? The plans that you may have for the future. You know, we were planning to go on a cruise or on a vacation. Now that's not going to happen. I was so looking forward to that. All of those things can really uh, deter an individual and maybe plant a seed to say, you know what, maybe I don't need this. Let's take a look at divorce and then I don't have to worry about myself, maybe, you know, I'm about someone else. I just have to worry about myself. Mm -hmm. But once again, like my wife was talking to me, there's a lot of individuals that they're not judging anyone. Definitely want to throw that out there. Uh, a lot of individuals are posting things across Instagram, Facebook, things of that nature, of what some people may think minute things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And just saying that they're just willing to throw that away. So to open this up, uh, I just wanted to start off with Isaiah, uh, the 54th chapter and the 17th verse. And I want to point this uh, directly to this pandemic that we're going through uh, with coronavirus. And this uh, 17th verse reads, and I'm reading from the King James Version, No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. Mm -hmm. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. Mm -hmm. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. And so... We don't know uh, why this pandemic came up to be. We don't know if it's man-made. Was it something that's sent by God? Don't know. Only God and individuals that may be involved in making it, if that's the case, know about that. But the Bible tells us that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. If this is a weapon that was designed to break people up, put them into an uproar to uh, to um, really break apart marriages, that weapon is not supposed to be able to prosper. Mm-hmm. And for a lot of individuals... It's not the fact that you're not dealing with it 
uh, too well. It's the fact that you don't want to deal with it. That's true. It would be easier for me, instead of facing this and working through and fighting for the relationship that I said that I wanted, sometimes it's easier just to say I can hire a lawyer for X amount of thousands of dollars and just get this person behind me, and I can move on and do what I want to do. Mm-hmm. And sometimes that's a selfish uh outlook a selfish aspect for individuals because they're only concerned about them Mm. they don't want to be married anymore Mm. they don't want to be tied down anymore and sometimes it's not for uh what i would say maybe be a a good reason and then the second part of that scripture says every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn Mm -hmm. see some of you have friends family members other people that are uh throwing everything out there against you and your relationship and you won't condemn it Mm. If you stopped it where the the uh, cut the head of the snake off in the beginning, you don't have to worry about getting bit. Mm-hmm. But sometimes we let individuals speak out against us. We don't say anything. We don't speak to that. And then we start to uh, endure uh, the negativity that comes from that. But if people are, uh, if there's a weapon that's formed against you, you have to speak out against that. And so if you're going through something in the midst of this pandemic, can you speak something positive? Can you speak life into your situation? Say, okay, I know that maybe maybe the enemy is behind this and he wants to come into our marriage and separate us or cause a divorce. We can say the devil is a lie. Mm. We can say that we are going to live. Our marriage is going to live. This is just not a, about us. It's about our children. It's about our legacy. It's about our lineage. And are we going to let the enemy get an upper hold on us? And so the last thing I'll go back to, you know, uh, a few months ago, we did a, a series on marriage vows and and the things that we said in there, you know, uh, in sickness and in health, to death do us part, for rich or for poorer, for better or for worse. These are those times right now when all of that stuff that we talked about are coming into play. So what are you going to do? Are you going to believe the word uh, of, of the Lord, what the Bible says that you should fight through? You put your trust in God or do you put your trust in man and just give away and say, none of this is looking right. So I'd rather just do this on my own and then give in to divorce. Mm. So like my husband was saying, one of the things that was irritating me is in seeing, you know, like he said, as this topic came about, as seeing the humor that people were having in reference to how many marriage couples would be lined up to go see the divorce lawyer. And people were just sharing this like it's it's funny. And I think for me, um, Shan, it got under my skin because who's praying for these marriages? We're Mm. laughing at them, but who's praying for them? Wow, that's good. And so I was so irritated. I remember telling my husband, I said, baby, we got to do a show on this. And how we allow the world to... Uh, um, I'm not going to say control us, or I'm going to say dictate what it is that we should do. Mm -hmm. And so the thing of promoting it. Okay. So then this is the second part to that. So me and my husband, when this whole thing first started off, we were sitting, um, I know I was in the kitchen. You was in the, the eating area and we were listening to a specific radio show. And the radio show was promoting cheating, basically. Mm-hmm. You remember? Yeah. And so it was talking about how a person is having to be locked down with their husband or their wife, but their bae or their boo or whomever is across town. Mm. And everybody was laughing about it. The 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 individual um, hosts that were on the show or whomever, however you want to say it, radio personalities, were laughing and they thought it to be funny. But again, I asked, who's praying for these marriages? Now I'm going to say this, and like my husband said, you know, God put us on a mission to save marriages. But if you've been with Marriage Mothers with the Kings for a while, you would know that all the previous shows we had, in a sense, I think kind of led up to such a time as this, as he was saying with the marriage vows. So you would have to ask yourself, I would encourage you. Number one, are you allowing the world to dictate your ways of how you think in regards of your marriage? Mm-hmm. That's number one. Number two, are you allowing those toxic family members and friends who mean you no good, as we used to say in the country growing up, to dictate your marriage? Number three, did you get married because God directed you to get married? Or did you get married because, like I hear a lot of women say, I'm getting older, I want to have a child, uh, you know, well, and then I even hear, and I'm speaking from a woman's perspective, I hear a lot of women say, you know what, I'd rather just be with this person 
instead of being by myself and being lonely for the rest of my life. So you rather put up with anything. So this is what I had was thinking and, and was my thought process. And I wrote this down. For many, this time that we are in of quarantine, quarantine has brought unresolved issues to the surface. Mm. And so... Uh, how how they used to say growing up, I used to hear people talk about oil and water and how it doesn't mix. And so you can shake it up all you want to. But as soon as you set it down and you let it settle, guess what happens? That oil comes to the top and it begins to separate from the water. Mm -hmm. So ask yourself this. Is what you're going through right now the unresolved issues that sh you should have dealt with a long time ago? That's good. My husband, I remember saying on a previous show was talking about, and I'm going to paraphrase, busyness. As long as you're busy, 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 you're a busybody. And I want to say, and I'm going to look it up real quick if I can, that the scripture talks about being a busybody. Let me write it down so I don't forget. But the scripture talks about being a busybody, and I'm going to read that. When you are consistently running busy, you are avoiding the issues that you need to address and need to face. And so, yes, it may be very well possible that people are going to be heading to a lawyer to get a divorce because you're finally coming to a place in your life where you have no choice. You can't use busyness as being uh, an excuse, if you will, and you have to address the issue at hand. Some people are in their marriage broken. Some people are, they feel abandoned. Mm -hmm. It is so many things when it comes to marriage. Yes, just like my husband says, should people fight for it? They definitely should. Howsoever, there are some people that you're dealing with abuses, different types of abuses. Mm -hmm. Now, we're not going to sit up here and say fight for that. What I'm basically saying is don't allow others to dictate what decisions that you need to do and you need to make. What I would encourage you to do is turn to God. I would encourage you during this time, whatever it is that you may be feeling or wrestling with, fall down on your knees, spend time with God and pray and ask God to order your steps. And so I'm going to read this scripture, which is one that's very familiar to some coming from the book of Romans chapter 12, verse two, where it reads from the English standard version, do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewal of your mind that by testing, you may discern what is the will of God what is good and acceptable and perfect. And so what I'm going to say is when we go before God, a lot of us, well, let me say it like this. A lot of us have not been renewing our minds the way that we should be renewing our minds because we are operating in a place of avoidance. I just don't want to deal with it. I don't want to deal with the issues in my marriage. Yeah, I will pretend to the world that everything is perfect, but this is the time for husband and wife to sit down. And have that conversation. I know me and my husband have been sitting down during this time reflecting on a lot of things, trying to figure out what can we do better? You know, what did we like before? What are some things that maybe we need to change? But for some of you, the reason why this time of quarantine is so hard is because you don't know how to stay still. Mm -hmm. And staying still, not staying still has allowed you to... Avoid the things that you need to address. Marriage is more than just making it look pretty to the people on the outside. We've said it several times. It takes work. And so if both partners are not willing to work, let's just be honest, it's not going to work. It's not a one-sided thing. My husband speaks about it all the time when he speaks on the scripture of being equally yoked. He can't pull all the weight in his marriage. And then our marriage is supposed to be okay. That can't happen. So... The reason why a lot of people are looking at divorce after quarantine is because you never put in mar uh, work on your marriage in the first place. I'm just going to be mm, honest. That's, that's good. That is the truth. Mm. And so, you know, I think uh, for a lot of individuals, uh, they have to look at what something that we call a worldview. Mm -hmm. uh, and a worldview is basically, um, simply put, you know, is how you kind of look at uh, life. Mm -hmm. uh, is how they see things, how they understand things regarding issues. It may be with politics, religion, philosophy, uh, about the decisions that you make. What is your outlook at the way that you look at things, especially when it comes to marriage? Mm. Just because everybody else may be going under, do you necessarily believe that you have to go under with them? Mm -hmm. And so for a lot of individuals, I believe that uh, you have to ask your, yourself a big question, just one word, why? 
When it comes to the divorce, if you're thinking about divorce at the court, can you ask yourself the question, why? Now, whatever answer you come up with, that's between you and, and your God. Mm-hmm. But I think that some people have loved the idea uh, in the past of being able to be home. I want to take time off from work. I need to do more with my husband. I need to do more with my yes. kids. And now that that time is here, now you don't want that. Come on. You don't know what you want. You don't know what you want. Mm-hmm. Now, I understand being cooped up in the house, not being able to go out. It, it can be hard on individuals. We're not knocking that. Mm-hmm. But sometimes what we have to do is we have to find some things that we're able to put in place to help with that. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not about everybody being in the same living room for, you know, 24 hours. Uh, sometimes you have to come up with some innovative approaches, be creative, make some things so where you can get some time with your family and then you get some time alone with yourself. Mm-hmm. And yeah. so sometimes we may even have to ask ourselves this uh, question that I'm about to ask. Do you take this time as an opportunity to fix or heal your relationship? Mm. Or do you take this time to bad mouth it and figure out all the negativity that's going on in the relationship and then you, you focus on that? Mm-hmm. See, most of the time, wherever we focus our attention at, that's what's going to get the, the most from us. That's and that's the things that we start to see. Mm-hmm. So this is an opportunity that God may have given us. Hey, this pandemic is going on. You're going to be in quarantine. Go in your house, shut yourselves in, and work on your relationship. Because like my wife said, you may be too busy working on everything else. Mm-hmm. And you need to focus on that relationship, the children, the things that are going on within the house, uh, within the, the household, what may have been going on at school is getting back to family. Mm-hmm. That's true. And then once again, quality time. Are you spending quality time and making the best of that, or are you just letting time fly by? Mm. You know, when my wife was talking about, uh, there was an individual that said something, uh, well, my husband's not working. The only thing he's doing is just sitting on the couch um, uh, playing video games and watching TV all day. You know, let's look at both sides of that. That may have been a man or it could have been a woman that has just been working all the time, and that person needs a little bit of rest. Mm-hmm. They may need that for a moment, That's and true. you may have to give them um that space Mm -hmm. Uh, on the flip side of that don't let just the opportunity to have quality time with your spouse fly by yes you have to be able to step you know have a you can still have a candlelight dinner together there at home Mm -hmm. you can still watch a movie and hold each other you can walk around the yard you can go out in the garage and maybe work out together you have to be innovative and creative and find some things that you can do together to keep the flame burning and if it comes to a point where you need a little bit of space hey separate rooms sometimes i'm in the living room my wife is in um the bedroom the the bedroom in their sitting Mm -hmm. area or she may be in the office Mm -hmm. you know if i get too flustered i may uh, go outside hey boys you know the lawn leaves more and y'all get the ride lawnmower out i'm gonna teach you how to use it Mm -hmm. or i may be out in the garage putting the gun together Mm -hmm. i I, I spend some time with the things that i like to do so that everything doesn't become so monotonous Mm -hmm. and then once again are you focusing more on the negative than you are the positive yes try to instill some positive aspects there Mm -hmm. and then one other thing that i want to throw out there then i'm gonna throw this back over to my wife sometimes we have to come down to the hard reality Mm. is the issue the marriage or is the issue you? Come on, come on, somebody. Or yes. you having a hard time dealing with things that you said, things that you've done, mm-hmm. not being able to be still, or you know, knowing that you're not giving your family your all, or even giving yourself your all, and instead of just taking that and dealing with it from your perspective, you're putting it off to say it's the marriage. That's true. That's true. Instead of just saying, no, this is me. I need to get myself fixed. I need to spend some time with a counselor. I need to spend some time with God, get myself straight so that the family, the marriage can be straight. Mm -hmm. So we just really have to ask ourselves that question. Is it the marriage or is it really you? That's true. And so I was sitting up thinking this question. How could it be a bad thing to spend too much time together as husband and wife? Like how? Now, again, if it's an abusive situation, it's... um, what do you call it? Like negative. Um, mm-hmm. I'm not going to say um, it's, if it's abusive situation, the situation is not conducive. A situation that you knew wasn't a good situation to go in in, in the first place. I'm not talking about that where it's toxic. That's the word I wanted mm-hmm. to use. If it's a very extremely toxic situation where it causes harm to you, that's different. But I'm talking about. People who just, you got married, but you just haven't been working on it. You had the beautiful wedding day or you got married down at the courthouse and you just haven't been working on it. You just been hitting the ground running and staying busy from there. You like the idea of being married, but you don't like 
marriage and putting in the work that it takes to actually have a successful marriage. So I was sitting up thinking about me and my husband and the things that we've done during this time. Number one, because, and I'm not trying to brag on us. I'm just giving people ideas and I've seen ideas of other things that people have done too, which is amazing. But we didn't allow this to frustrate us. It was something that was different for us. And one of the things that me and my husband realize is we've been married for almost 22 years come the end of this year. This is the first time ever in 22 years that we have spent so much time together because, of course, being a military family, moving every two to three years or, you know, being on deployments and field problems and different things like that, we were just going here, there, and the other. And then once my husband retired, business and schools and, you know, children and all these things like that. How could this be a bad time? Why is it looked at in a sense as a negative connotation? Like my husband was saying, I remember when I was deployed and I remember when I was in the field or when I was working too much, you know, managing a job or whatever the case may be, that I was like, oh my God, I just wish I could spend more time with my family. I spoke that into existence a long time ago. And we are spending so much time with our family now. Me and my husband will get up, we'll go walk in, we'll go sit on the back porch. Like he said, we'll go walk the yard, we'll watch a, a TV show, we'll might binge watch a TV show, a movie. You know, sometimes we'll just get in a vehicle and we'll just drive around. It's not like we're necessarily going anywhere. We just sit and talk. And the reason why there may be so much tension in marriages right now is because for some reason it's, it's hard for you to sit down and look at your husband and your wife and number one, recognize them for who they are and accept them for who they are. Because somebody said this the other day, actually we was listening to a show because we had to go somewhere. And the young lady had made mention about this. She was talking about how... Um, in your mind, sometime when you are so busy, in your mind, you create a facade of what your husband or wife should be. Mm -hmm. So it's almost you're in a marriage, you operate in a marriage, but when it comes to your husband or your wife, you create a fantasy in your head of what you want them to be. Mm -hmm. And then you get mad when you're dealing with them in real life and they are not who you've created in your head. So you are comparing them in real life to the fantasy in your head. And then you turn around and you get mad and take it out on them. They don't know what's going on in your head, especially if you don't, as we used to tell our children when they were little and whining, use your words. You're not using your words as an adult and you're not effectively communicating your expectations to your husband or your wife. And so that right there causes tension. Going back to what Kenya has said. It may be just you. It may not be your spouse. But see, we are of a world. When we operate and we think of things as a worldly perspective, we are of a world that instead of dealing with the issues that we need to deal with head on, it's easier to blame somebody else. It's easier to blame something else because the responsibility comes off of us and it comes on to someone else. Yeah. And I think uh, one of the things that we really have to take a look at, what my wife was talking about before, you know, we, we've been in a society where things have been so fast paced and moving all the time but mm -hmm. now when everything comes to a, a grinding halt it, mm -hmm. it can be very hard to deal with yeah. and I'm just going to go out there I'm one of those individuals uh, if you talk to individuals that I work with people I've worked with in the past they will tell you oh, th this boy is always going mm -hmm. he needs to sit down somewhere he's going to work himself silly and so this was a hard time for me I had to get up every once in a while and do something physical uh, just to be able to adjust but then slowly I started to realize that it's time for me uh, to relax. So it's, it's a good thing for those individuals to recognize when you are going through something mm -hmm. and just be able to try to do the opposite. Just take it bit by bit, step by step. Now, the other thing, I want to just take a, a quick stab at this one. The, the first question of the day says, why do you think the world goes so hard to promote divorce? I'm going to go out there and say, I don't think that the world really goes uh, at it to, to say we don't want individuals to be married. Everyone should get divorced. Mm -hmm. I think it's the way that people perceive the things that they see pertaining to divorce. Yes. Yeah. And so I'm, I'm going to start with something, uh, I will say, in, in the natural, what we see, and then I want to go to the spiritual and from the Bible standpoint. Mm -hmm. in, in the natural, uh, we look at things, and oftentimes we want what we see. Yes. 
So when you see an individual that is married to someone, let's say from Hollywood, Mm -hmm. well, that's the heartthrob. Everyone thinks this person is sexy, built, found, whatever the case may be. Then those two individuals get married. Then you find out six months later that they're divorced, and then they're moving on to see somebody else. Sometimes when we see that it's easy for what someone else has done, we want to be able to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. So it's not just the fact that you may think that the world is promoting it, what the world is showing you and the decision that you make is two different things. Yes, yes. And so to kind of back that up, if, if you go over into Genesis, and everyone is, uh, is probably familiar with the story of Adam and Eve, you know that God made uh, Adam and then he made Eve because he thought that it was not good for man to be alone. Mm-hmm. But then God gave them specific instructions to not eat from the tree that was in the midst of the garden. Mm-hmm. So one... God didn't put anybody else there to let them go eat from the tree. Then Eve said, oh, I think they ate from it. I want to eat from it too. He gave you the instruction and said, just don't do it. Mm-hmm. But then they let somebody else in that said, well, I'm not going to go up there and eat it. But you know what? God doesn't want you to eat it because if you do, you'll be like him. Mm-hmm. So now there's a trick of the enemy to get you to see that you can be like somebody else if you do something that you're not supposed to do. Mm-hmm. And so what does that get us to today? We look at a lot of reality TV shows where it's so easy to go and say get married and then it's easy to get divorced. Mm -hmm. You go on a TV show where you're spending time with eight, nine, ten other guys to see who's going to be the one that wins this person's heart. You do it the the vice versa. You have uh, women uh, lined up or men lined up to try to marry one specific uh, woman. And everybody is spending this time with this individual. What are you seeing and what are you believing? What are you giving into? Mm-hmm. Are you going to be like Adam and Eve and give in because you let the enemy in? Or are you just going to do what God says? Mm-hmm. You know, there are many different avenues for finding a spouse. Once you have that spouse and you are married, you can't live from a worldly standpoint Mm -hmm. it has to be biblical it has to be scriptural it has to be between you and that spouse and not everybody else because when you let everybody else in that's when you start having issues Mm -hmm. so that worldview that you may have um is it the world that's promoting divorce or is it just you that's promoting divorce? Mm. Is it the individuals that are around you, your circle of friends, maybe family members that's promoting that? You have to be able to look at things from your own eyes and make a decision on what it is that you want to do. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm going to go out there and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell individuals that may not know, uh, my wife Chantrell is my second wife. Mm-hmm. Uh, my first relationship just did not go well. It ended in divorce. And it was one of those things I had to sit back and think about, uh, what do I really want? Mm-hmm. If I'm not happy, and I'm not saying in the sense that I'm not getting my way, and things aren't turning out the way I want them to be, I'm not moving in the right direction in life. We weren't moving in the right direction in life at all. Mm -hmm. So I had to sit back and say, is this what I really want for myself for the rest of my life? Mm -hmm. And I remember sitting down talking to a friend of mine that was a minister, and some of you have heard me say this. He never said, go get divorced. Mm -hmm. He said, I would never tell the individual that. That is the individual choice that a person has to have. Mm -hmm. But he said, just look at everything that is going on, Try this, try that, and in the end, you have to ask yourself a question. If a person isn't helping you, are they hurting you? Mm -hmm. And when I went through all the things that he wanted me to go through, I got back in church, gave my life back to Christ, started going to Bible study, joined the choir. I'm doing everything just pointed in that direction. And so that was a choice that I had to make at that particular time. Mm -hmm. And so I don't think the world promotes it so much as much as that we look at things and decide that that's what we want or we look at TV shows and reality shows and say, well, I'm going to put myself and insert myself into that situation. Mm -hmm. Everything that says it's reality isn't really reality. That's true. The grass Mm -hmm. isn't always greener on the other side. Mm -hmm. That is true. And so with the question of the week, we want to go ahead and read some of these comments. And so... If you are just joining us to just join midway of the show, the question of the week is this. We have two. Number one, why do you think the world goes so hard to promote divorce? Question number two, do you allow what the world promotes to affect your thought process on marriage slash divorce? So one of the responses 
says, I don't think the world promotes divorce. I think we are in a culture where being happy is the emphasis, being happy in whatever capacity. I'm a bit different. I do believe that marriage and relationship takes work, work, and more work. However, I think that work is only right when both parties are willing to do the work out of pure love for one another. Mm, that's good. If there is no love or trust there, there is no happiness. I worked on my failing marriage for six years before I realized that neither was happy. And we were existing but not living. Mm. She's not a bad person, and I'm not. However, we wasn't good for each other, which would affect our children. Wow. No one is saying divorce, though being happy should be the focus. And if true happiness is working hard and making the marriage work, then by all means do it. But if this marriage is hindering you or causing other issues in your life because it's toxic and abusive, in parentheses, the individual put, which can be more physical, in parentheses, th then get out and move on. Now, someone else uh, answered question number one. It says, selfishness and focusing on self-preservation. It's easier to save me than we. Mm. And then number two for the answer that the person gave is, I'm affected by it because I'm exposed to it consistently, but I overcome it by choosing faith over feelings in those moments. Wow, that's a good one. Faith over feelings. Go ahead. Did that, you have some answers? No, that, that's good because I think a lot of individuals, when it comes to uh, this time that we're in, it is a lot about the individual's feelings. Mm -hmm. And some people have to fall back on their feelings because they don't have the faith. Mm -hmm. But can you build yourself up? Can you start putting your trust in God so that your faith can be built up? Mm -hmm. You know, things don't happen overnight. Marriage is something like we've said before. It is not a sprint. It, it, it's a marathon, mm -hmm. you know. And you have to run that thing together so that you get to that completed end uh, of being able uh, to finish. Uh -huh. So that, that faith over feelings is something that's, that's really good. Um, I also think that when it comes to these times of being um, isolated, being in a pandemic, uh, that we have to do a few things in our households uh, that would probably help ward off divorce, that would keep some peace within uh, your household. One of the things you should take the time with your family and, and pray. Mm -hmm. You know, pray pray against that the enemy would step in and put things in your mind or put things in your heart when it comes to divorce. You ask God to give you that strength uh, to continue on to fight the good fight in your relationship. Mm -hmm. Pray that God would give you a mind to be open so that you can be creative and, and come up with some things for the family to be able to do. Mm -hmm. um, a part of that may be uh, being able to talk more with your spouse, maybe about your feelings, about how things are going for you, how things are going for, for her mm -hmm. uh, that, that's going on. Uh, do you spend more quality time with each other, doing things as a family? Maybe taking up hobbies that not only you but everyone else can get into. I know during this time, I was finally able to find some garden boxes, and our whole family got outside, and we dumped dirt in the garden boxes, put them in the ground, lined it, planted seeds, and we planted a garden together uh, as a family. Mm -hmm. So when you think about the garden aspect, when you think about biblical scripture, what a man sows shall he reap. Mm -hmm. And so what are you sowing into your family? That's true. Are you planting anything so that you can reap the benefits, so that you can reap the fruit thereof, or are you just like casting your seed just everywhere. That's true. That's true. And I would even say this. So since we're talking about the well, the world's perspective and why the world is going so hard, we do know the scriptures, you know, how the, the enemy comes, the thief comes not, but to still kill and destroy. We mm -hmm. know that. We know that the adversary, the devil is going about seeking who he can devour. devour. And so the thing is this, in the world sense to break, break it on down, this is just how I see it. There are a lot of negative influences on marriage in the world's aspect. So me and my husband was talking about this. I'm not going to lie. We love music. We are music, music, music. And so we were talking about how if you are in a time such as this where you can just stop and think, especially if you pray to prayer, because this is my constant prayer. God, please remove the scales from my eyes. Please remove the wool away from my eyes so I can see as you desire for me to see or I can see as you see is my prayer. Um, that I've been praying for years. So let's say the example of music. There are certain songs that you can listen to that will put you in a certain mood and a certain mindset. Mm -hmm. Now, you can't blame it on the song, 
because you desire to change to turn that song on or look up that song or play that particular song. But me and my husband were talking about that. And we was kind of like, wow, music is very powerful. Now reality TV, as he was saying, is very powerful. If you look at most reality television shows, especially that has to do with um, marriage and family, specifically marriage, nine times out of 10, they're either saying negative things out of their mouth, especially to the girlfriends or, you know, it's not so much the males that I see in reality TV. It's more so the females. No shade, but it happens. And they're arguing. Keep in mind, if you are allowing yourself to let this be the foundation of how your marriage should operate or how you should carry yourself in your marriage as husband or wife, what you got to keep in mind is they are getting paid. Mm. The the bigger the argument, the, the greater the negativity, the higher their paychecks is. That's for them. So most people would say they sold they sold to the devil for money because for the love of money is the root of all evil. They may, That may be very well true. But keep in mind this, how is your marriage suffering from it? Mm-hmm. Did you go and jump into a marriage because you seen the, the reality TV stars that happened for them? You seen somebody on social media, they didn't have a proposal that was grand. You seen a celebrity that they're bad, they boo proposed to them, and now you feel like here I am. Let's just say, for example, I'm 42 years old, I need to be married, and you just go jump into a marriage? And God didn't even tell you to do it. And then it's a woe is me. So we're not trying to beat up anybody. What we're trying to say is use this time to examine efficiently and seek God as to what it is. Like this one individual said, he or she was in their marriage for a whole six years. It was a failing marriage. They realized it wasn't the wife. It wasn't the husband. They just were not good together. Mm -hmm. But on the flip side, some of you all are ready to go see a divorce lawyer because you just are not used to working on anything. Mm -hmm. You never had your feet. What did they used to say? Your feet held to the fire. Yep. And so you just want to take the easy way out. And then you go jump into another marriage and then another marriage and then another marriage. And before you know it, you'd have been married four or five or six times. Well, was it really all the spouses that you were married to? Or are you the common denominator and you choose not to work on things Mm -hmm. and get too deep? Because soon as somebody get too deep, I got to divorce you and go marry somebody else. But you're making a mockery of God because God created marriage. Yep. I mean, I'm just saying. So... We cannot allow the world to dictate. We have a choice. This is what I heard my husband say just underneath. We have the power to choose. So what are you choosing? Are you choosing to get deep during this time and work on your marriage? Or are you choosing to follow the ways of the world and allow the world to continue to influence you? What is the choice? Because at the end of the day, Chantrell King can't do nothing unless I want to do it. You see what I'm saying? I can't get involved in something unless I make the choice. It is our choice. And that's what I love about God. God does not force us to do anything. God allows us to choose. We can choose if we want to follow him. We could choose if we want to be a child of his. We could choose if we don't want to worship God. God never forced us to do anything. It's a choice. So what I'm going to say is it's time for us as grown adults to start making some decisions, to start dealing with the things at hand, to quit placing the blame on everybody else because everybody else is not at fault for the choices that we made in our individual lives. Yeah, that's good. And one of the things that I, I wanted to cover right here as we were, you know, getting towards the end of the show, um, you know, I was talking about positivity, staying away from the negative things. And I think this pandemic uh, and, you know, this caused the isolation that we're in has caused individuals to get caught up focusing on each other's bad habits mm-hmm. instead of. Uh, the good things and the yes. good reasons why you married that individual. Yes. You know, you, you see somebody walk through the house and they do something you don't particularly like. Well, there she go again. That's the way she's going to always be. She's never going to change that. Mm-hmm. You know, or say it could be the same thing towards uh, a male. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we can't focus on the negativity. And, and sometimes what we have to understand is even during times that are hard, you have to keep a positive outlook. Mm-hmm. 
Sometimes that positivity is the thing that will help you get through. It may be hard right now, but we have the ability to pull through this. Yes. My wife and I are both strong. Working together, we can get this done. Yes. And then, you know, when you go from a uh, spiritual pers- uh, perspective, Ecclesiastes, the fourth chapter, the 12th verse says, though one may be overpowered, Two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. So, number one, are you trying to do everything by yourself and things are just being overpowering for you? Uh Are you not operating as the two trying to become one and then letting that third strand come in with God being in the midst of it so that you're not quickly broken? Uh Some people are broken because it's just one strand in a relationship. One person is doing everything. Yes. Then yes. you're sometimes broken because there's two of y'all, but you may be pulling in opposite directions. Yes. You're not pulling together. Mm-hmm. And some of us just don't even have Jesus in the center between us because we're so busy uh, going left and right that we can't meet Jesus in the middle. Mm-hmm. We have to be able to make that uh, three-stranded cord so we're not easily broken. And then the other thing, we have to understand that we have to let love be the thing that is the basis for our foundation. My yes. wife was alluding to it before. A lot of people jump into different relationships for different reasons. But the Bible says, above all, love each other deeply because love covers a multitude of sins. And that's First mm-hmm. Peter, the fourth chapter in the eighth verse. Mm-hmm. And so if love covers a multitude of sins, can love not only look over those liberty things that we fuss and argue about all the time? Mm-hmm. Just because he left the cap off the orange juice in the refrigerator, is that a reason to go off and, and think about divorce? True. Just because, you know, she threw her... Um, uh, garments from the day maybe she's working outside in in the uh garden she came in took a shower and just threw them in the corner is that really a reason to have a fight and then try to make that lead towards divorce Mm. sometimes we overlook we let little things come in and tear up the whole house that we've built Mm -hmm. and so what we have to start understanding is we need to be positive Because Jeremiah, the 29th chapter, 11th verse says, For I know the plans I have for you, declared the Lord. Plans for you to prosper and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Mm -hmm. If God doesn't want to do anything to you, why would you do some things that's going to have something hinder yourself and hinder your husband that's going to hinder your children? Mm -hmm. He wants your entire family to be able to prosper. The oil runs from the head down. That's true. Yeah. Yep. So what we have to do is stop giving in to just anything. Don't just believe in anything. Take your time, research things, look at things from different perspectives. As we used to say, run that thing by somebody. Run that thing through God. Mm -hmm. Pray about it. God, open up my eyes. Give me a vision. Give me insight. Lead me to the proper um, decision that I need to make and then make your decision from there. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, once again, looking at the, the question of the day, um, I won't say that the world does not have influence on the way the individuals uh, go about and, you know, if they want to end the marriage and divorce. But I think it's more so how we look at things and we let that worldview that other people have influence us. Mm -hmm. Well, if that person can do it, I can do it, too. Mm -hmm. If this worked for them, I can do it, too. In a lot of situations, that may be the case. But once again, understanding everything that you see on TV, even though they call it reality TV, may not be real. That's true. And so what my wife was talking about there, you know, some of those individuals are paid to act a certain way. It's, some of that may be scripted, whatever the case may be, and it says that they're getting more money the more that they cut up, if you will. Mm-hmm. So I want you to think about this. The more that you and your husband cut up, the more money the lawyers are going to get. Oh, now that's true. That is true. The more that y'all cut fact. up, the more money you're giving yes, to somebody else. That's true. So someone may say, okay, as we're wrapping up, you know, the show, someone may say, okay, How do I change these ways? I don't know how. Now, for some of you may think, are you serious? But some people just do not know. So I'm going to ask you this question. Are you lining up with God's plan for marriage and for your life? Now, we know just kind of simple in a sense is God is the head. Is God the head of your marriage? So God is supposed to be the head. Is he the head of your marriage? Is he the head of your life as an individual? This coming on down the list is the husband. The husband is supposed to provide and protect. Husbands, are you providing for your wife and your family? Mm -hmm. And are you protecting your wife and your family? If the answer is no, you are out of line with God's plan and God's vision. 
Yep. Because that's what the word, of, that's scripture, mm-hmm. okay? And, and that protecting there is not just a physical protection, saying I'm going to beat somebody because they said something to my wife. Are you covering your wife and your children in, in prayer? Emotionally, you, yes, spiritually, spiritually all of that, okay? Mm-hmm. Then wives, are you the support and covering? Are you the support for your husband? Because as your husband is providing for you and the family, you know, financially, emotionally, whatever the case may be, um, physically, are you the cover and support? Are you lifting your husband up? Are you covering him? Are you covering your family? And then the next step is the family and everything else come after this. So then I'm going to say a part two and then, you know, we're going to go ahead and close out the show. So are you backing away from things that are not of God? Some of you are listening to music that's altering the way that you think far away from God. Some of you are, are binge watching so much TV, you're not even spending time with God. So that's where fasting come in. Now, most people, when you think fasting, you think, oh, okay, I got to turn down my food and whatever the case may be. Fasting in the sense of get off of social media for 30 days. Don't watch TV for two weeks. Things like that. Get away from it because the more that you allow yourself to be indoctrinated by it, the more that you're going to get irritated, the worse that your marriage is going to get, the negative that your mindset, the more negative that your mindset is going to get. So those are things to look at. What do you need to separate yourself from? If you don't know, pray and ask God. Okay, God, what do I need to separate um, myself from so that way I can go forth and live a productive marriage and a healthy life? All right, and so moving on with our thought of the week, and our thought of the week this week comes from James Van Prague, and it reads, Don't let others influence you or talk you into what they think is the correct path. This life is too short not to be happy. Only manifest those outcomes that will bring your joy or bring you joy. Uh. And so once again, that comes from James uh, Van Prague. And so one of the things that I want to hit on here just uh, right before the end um, we're, we're in a hard time. Uh, there are a lot of individuals living right now that have never went through a pandemic before. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it is hard. It's putting stress on us. Uh, but I think the defining factor is going to be how do we handle uh, that stress? Mm-hmm. How do we go about our everyday lives? Do we recognize the things that are going on in our everyday lives that may be hindering our relationships? Uh, some other things that we can do to help out with this. Create a schedule. Do things and maybe at a certain time every day and, and put some breaks in there. Put mm-hmm. some times we need to stop and the family's going to get together and eat lunch or we're going to make lunch together. Maybe we're going to barbecue. Uh, be able to have compassion for not only your, your spouse but your kids as well. The, if you think it's rough on uh, you as a parent, it's probably rough on them too. They can't be around their friends. They're not in school. They can't go to proms. Graduations have been canceled. Have some compassion, some sympathy, and show more love in that instead of any anger or, or negativity uh, that's there. And then the last thing uh, that I'll say is really being able to take a deep dive into you and your spouse. What brought you guys together in the first place? What were some of the commonalities that were there? Some of the things that you guys agree on? And kind of focus on the positive thing instead of the negative things. Mm -hmm. Now, that's not to say you don't sweep the negative things under the rug because I don't care how much you sweep the house, you put the dirt under the rug, the dirt is still there. Mm -hmm. But sometimes we have to be able to look at the positive first, slowly bring out the negative and actually talk about it in a uh, respectful manner so that it doesn't cause offense to the other spouse. And then maybe you can really just be able to toss that dirt out. You're able to deal with it in an effective manner. That's true. And so guess what, you all? That is today's show of Marriage Mondays with the Kings. We hope and pray that it has been a blessing to each and every one of you. And please feel free to share with someone else because we don't know what each other are going through in our everyday lives. We want to let you know that Marriage Mondays with the Kings is brought to you by Christian Human Force slash Inspiration, which is a group that is designed to uplift and inspire and bring humor to everyday life in a Christian way. If you are in the social media, please check them out simply by going to search them on Facebook at Christian Humor Force slash Inspiration. Now we ask that you join us back Monday, May 11th at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time as we continue this in quarantine. Next week, we're going to be speaking about family conflict during quarantine. We're going to drive it from marriage to family and kind of keep it going. And so we were, we are going to have our team put these questions out to you. It's two of them. Number one, do you feel that 
this time of quarantine is bringing family issues to the surface. If so, why? And then two, why do you, why do you think, what do you think are some ways that could help with turning the issues towards better for families in conflict? So we're going to have that out probably Tuesday. Our team will have it out Tuesday on um, Facebook and Instagram. Feel free to respond um, at the very latest Saturday. But please feel free if you have any comments or questions or topics that you would like to be discussed during this time, hit us up on our Facebook page, our Instagram, or our YouTube channel, which is all Marriage Mondays with the Kings. You can hit us up at our Twitter handle, which is at K-E-N-Y-A-N-S-H-N. Email us at marriagemondays at mycaragen.com. Don't forget our um, podcast as well if you want to share the content. But we want to thank you so much for joining us, taking time out of your schedule. We ask that you join us back next week on Monday at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. And as always, keep it locked right here on KRGN 98.5 FM. The The Rock. Rock.